Are we doing that video thing again? Yeah, always prep. She always jumps right there as soon as we start turning things on. Anyway guys, welcome back to my channel. Before we get into today's discussion, I just wanted to share my newest purchase. This is like the coolest coffee mug ever. Not only is it one of my favorite characters, but it's huge. It's like you can fit a whole can of soup in it. But you're not here for purchases, you're here for dog training tips. So we'll get into it. It's amazing. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about crate training. So in one of my previous videos, um, I referred to crate training as kennel training. I wanna clear up all the confusion before we go any further on that. So I've called it crate training for over 15 years-ish, yeah. So it's always been crate to me because there is a difference between crate and kennel. The reason I kept saying kennel instead of crate is because I let the internet get to me. So I refuse to let them get to me. <laughs> um, people, I guess, get very touchy on calling it a crate. So whether you call it a crate or a kennel, we're just gonna refer to it as crate training for now on. It's hard to change ways <laughs> when you've been calling it crates for years. I'm, and it's not, not everybody seems to be doing this, just a few people that I've had discussions with that I got yelled at. So if you saw me talk about kennel training versus crate training, it's it's the same thing. But a kennel is more of a non-portable crate. So kennel, kennel can be like, you know, an outside uh, enclosure for your dog or it can be more of a or it can even be an enclosure in your house, but it's it's one that's not easily moved. Um, a crate, it, you're usually able to fold it up or take it down to move it easier or use it for transportation, stuff like that. The most popular crates out there are the foldable, collapsible, metal type ones that are just like, you know, which I'll show you later in the video. You can also get crates that are the plastic kind that just have one metal door on the front and has the holes on the side. Most of the time people get, seem to get those for if they're transporting animal uh, through planes or stuff like that, but I also see people use that in their homes too. Either one is perfectly acceptable. The more popular version is definitely the the metal foldable kind. I said you can obviously train your dog without one, but I love using crates. It gives me a better control during training time. It gives me uh, better routine management during their puppy stages, like when I want nap times and feeding times. And even though we don't use the crates really anymore that often, um, they do come in handy for other situations too. Um, Silver actually suffered two really bad seizures. The second one was worse than the first one uh, last year. And so thankfully we had a crate because we were able to keep her in there as she was coming back out of it because it actually caused some paralysis and stuff. And she was bouncing around the house so much we were worried she was going to get a concussion. So crates can come in handy for other things. That's why I always say it's great to crate train your puppy at a young age and get them used to it and get them to know that it's a safe thing and it's not something that should be scary or dangerous. I mean, it's it's supposed to be like a little den for them. Thankfully, even during that seizure episode, she was able to go in there and that way she, if she did have a bounce around kind of episode, she wasn't banging into really hard objects like the furniture or, and it was, it was safer for her to be in the crate until she recovered from it. So there's many reasons to use a crate but you wanna make sure the dog is comfortable with it and feels like it's a safe and okay thing and not something scary. And it shouldn't be something scary. I mean, it's the only time it's scary is for the jerks in the world that use them at puppy mills and stuff. So I, I think that's why people have an issue because they think it's always so bad. I don't know, it's just, there's extreme situations where they use it for wrong reasons. And that that's not what the crate should be used for. I mean, it's it's a training tool. It's not a permanent type thing. So we're gonna get into some little tips and tricks and we're gonna have Lucian maybe help us out later to show you what uh, you can do when you bring home your new puppy. So if you know you're bringing home a new puppy, I suggest getting the crate first and setting it up in your home. You wanna make sure the crate is going to be big enough for the dog when it's full grown to stand up and turn around in comfortably. You don't wanna give it too much room because then that, that will lead the dog to possibly wanna use the bathroom like in a certain section of the crate and, and that, that doesn't help with the potty training situation if you're gonna use a crate for potty training purposes too. And the main reason I like the wire cages is because most of them now come with a divider. So if you're bringing home a puppy this tiny, you can actually put that divider in. We don't have the divider anymore, so I'm not gonna be able to show you guys. I don't know what happened to it, I couldn't find it. But when they're tiny, tiny, you can take that divider and put it in it. It latches onto the other parts of the, of the crate. So you can put that in there. So when they're tiny, they have a small little space to sleep and to relax in. 
and as they grow you can move that divider back further. Now when we got Gypsy and Cleo when we first brought them home we bought two crates, one for each dog. We ended up not using the two for them separately. I never recommend putting two dogs in a kennel together but uh, Clea just could not handle being by herself in her own crate so to try to give her some comfort the first couple of nights that she was with us, we had them both sleep in the same crate and it was big enough to where they both fit. Now I don't recommend that, that was just a special circumstance for us. Um, dogs should have their own crate. We wanted to do what we could to make her comfortable and she she was already bonded to her sister pretty well anyway, that's kind of another reason why we brought her home with us, that and she yelled at us to take her. <laughs> so, But for that situation, that's why we put them together and they ended up both being crate trained together uh, for the first couple of months that they were home with us. So we eventually took the crate and the second crate that we she wasn't using and put it downstairs. So that was nice because I had one upstairs that they slept in specifically and then we had the one downstairs for teaching them potty training and also getting them used to when I left the house I would put them in the crate together and they would watch how the other dogs were when I was gone and then I'd come back home and let them out type thing. So it was kind of nice that they both fit in there and neither one of them grew big. I bought way too big of crates. I should have known better but it worked out for us. But again, I don't recommend doing two dogs in, at once in the crate. It is possible if you need to. Every situation is different. We did... This is going to be another one of those videos. Yes, it is. I know. So when you do bring your puppy home, if you are going to crate train, be prepared that they will probably cry most of the night um, on and off. And I, we also were waking up like every four hours or every six hours. It, I think it was four hours for the first month. So it's like bringing a baby home. You're going to need to wake up and take care of it and take it outside because their bladders aren't strong enough. But at least they have a space in case they do have an accident. You know, and, and it helps them learn because dogs don't like to go to the bathroom where they sleep. They actually are very clean, believe it or not. I know that's hard to believe considering how much like raccoon poop they roll in. They don't want to defecate on their bedding. So they start doing that in the crate and they go, oh no, this is where I sleep type thing. So eventually it teaches them that you don't do it there, you do it outside. So the first couple of nights you bring your puppy home, definitely be prepared for some crying. Clea actually cried for I think like two months in a crate. It, it didn't matter if her sister was in there with her or not. She would just whine and whine and cry because she wanted to be with us. She didn't want to be in that crate. And it's something you just have to like kind of get past. It's kind of like a crying baby, you know, you're going to... Puppies are like babies. You have to take them out every couple of hours. You have to, you know, give them nap time and, and all that kind of stuff and deal with crying. But the crate helps with a lot of that stuff, especially with like potty training and nap time. Because when you have a puppy, especially a cattle dog, and it's running around like crazy, they will continually run around like crazy children until you kind of give them a time out. So when the girls would, I know it's dinner time, but I'm trying to record here. You can wait. We've got hungry puppies in here. So when the girls would be like running around and stuff for a long time and I needed to get stuff done or whether it was like work or cleaning, crates are nice because you can put the puppy in the crate and even though they might cry and whine and bark and everything else, you can actually, you know, cover it with a blanket, not fully cover it. I'll show you that too. You know, it gives them kind of like a timeout and they can have nap time and then you can do what you need to do around the house and then once you're ready to let the puppy out again, you let them out of the crate and take them immediately go potty. So that gives them, it starts giving them the idea of like, oh, that we, this is what we do. We wake up, we go to the bathroom. Crate training is also great for prepping the dog for when you actually want to leave the house, like whether it's to go run errands and go grocery shopping or just have a night out in the town. So when you have a little puppy, you can, you know, even while you're at home, like put it in the crate for like 15 minutes, but be in front of it and walk around with, walk around the crate to show that, hey, I'm still here. It's okay to be in this crate. It's fine. And then let it out. You know, you can do short increments until you get to like longer time periods and, and hopefully the dog will be okay once you leave. We're at the point though with our dogs where we don't put any of them in crates when we leave the house. Thankfully, they don't destroy the house when we leave anymore. There's been issues. It's not been perfect the whole time. So here comes Lucian, who is an old pro at crate training. 
And so one way to encourage your dog to go into the crate is to toss some treats in there. And as you can see, I'm just using small treats. And when I throw them in there, I'm saying, go get it. Like I'm trying to make it a positive and fun experience, almost like a game. And when I'm doing training like this, I'm also having him come back out of the crate and then go back in. And when they come back out of the crate and or even when they're inside the crate, I'm always praising them. I'm always like, yes, good boy. You know, I'm wanting to encourage them that this is an OK and safe thing. And as often as I say teaching them no is super important, teaching them yes is just as important or, you know, OK, you know, or whatever you want to use to encourage the dog. And once they're comfortable inside the crate, you move on to actually closing the door. And you still want to be encouraging and praise them when they're inside the crate and you can give them treats through the crate. And you, when you do that, you want to say, yes, you know, good boy, you know, or good girl, you know, just always praise them and encourage them that what they're doing is the correct thing. And this is why I like wire crates better, because I can give treats from any direction and they can see me no matter where I am. But this type of training can still be used with more of an enclosed crate like the plastic ones. And Lou knows he's fine. He's safe. And he's definitely totally fine with getting bacon strips, especially the bigger ones. I was having trouble making smaller pieces because the girls were giving me a hard time over there off to the side. So here's our little kitty blanket. It doesn't have to be a kitty blanket, but using a blanket to cover the crate can actually really help calm your dog down. And it really helps with puppies, especially if you have crying puppies. So I cover the front completely. I don't like or even approve of like totally enclosing the crate with a blanket because I want my dog to be comfortable and I want airflow getting in there. So I leave the sides and the back up partially. And this can really help with puppies who do cry. It helps get them kind of calmed down and maybe encourages them to take a nap. And you can see Lucian's laying down. He's, he's pretty much ready for the nap time. <laughs> and this doesn't work for all dogs, but I've had like super success with having a blanket over a crate. And you, as you can see, he's laying in there and he's totally fine and it's just super easy to have a blanket there because you can flip it up when you need to and p pull it down when you, you want them to actually like calm down for a nap. And yeah, he's just enjoying the heck out of those cookies. So now when you first bring a puppy home or even like a rescue dog, you might not be able to do much training when you bring them home, especially because like the first night they're going to be going into that crate. And if you're like us, it took almost all day just to pick up our girls. By the time we got home, there was not much time to actually train them with the crate. You know, the first night home, this for whether it's, you know, puppy or rescue, this is where they're probably most likely going to be sleeping. So one thing that I suggest people do, and this is also what we did, is already have the crate set up and we had, you know, like a bed in ours. Um, you can also put a blanket in there, you know, maybe a toy or two and some treats. And when you bring your puppy home, a good way to get them kind of more comfortable being around the crate is just actually show them the crate, like introduce them to it. And you can actually sit next to it and, you know, play with your puppy, you know, give them treats, play with them with a toy right next to the crate, just so they can see it and it, they know that it's there. We even placed our girls in there for like a brief moment with a toy and just left the door open so they could, you know, just check it out. And, you know, they were able to come out on their own. And we were also very fortunate that the breeder we went to, um, she actually does crate training and was very helpful and knowledgeable in preparing the girls for their new home with us. And most puppies usually are in some sort of crate or kennel, you know, depending where you get them. And, you know, even a rescue, you know, you, if you're going to a shelter to adopt, they're kind of used to a kennel thing. I mean, they might be a little bit fearful of it, but now some dogs like Gypsy need a little encouragement going into the crate. <laughs> She is very, very stubborn, just like her mother. She really hates it, or should I say she's very annoyed by it. But she was very awesome at crate training when she was very little, like when she was a puppy. But once she figured out that, she, or once she knew what was expected of her, she's like, I don't need this anymore, Mama. I don't want to do this. So one way you can lead them by the collar, gently, of course, don't like crazily force them to go into the crate, but you can lead them by their collar, Maybe pick them up or put them in there if they're fearful, but always praise them once they're actually in there. Try to be very comforting and reassuring so they don't freak out too much with the crate. So I know some rescues can be very fearful of going back into a crate and, you know, it's best just to sit with them and talk them through it and, 
you know, just try to be there for them with it. You see, I had to kind of like encourage her to go back in there again, you know. And I even take it one step further. I know most people don't do this, but, you know, I try to do tricks while they're in there and just try to make it fun and make it more like a game. And so it's more of a joyful moment, not a, not a freak out thing. But crate training does take time, but, you know, it's, it's really easy. You just praise them and encourage them and, and they do really well. And another thing with these crates, they have the lock on the bottom and you just pop it downward to get the tray out, which helps with easy cleaning. And it just slides right back in and you just lock it back up. Now, some dogs have figured out how to unlatch these latches, even with that little hook there, but not to name names, Kage, but <laughs> he actually unfolded one of these crates on his own when he was a puppy and re built it like he put it back together almost and sat so proudly next to it. But as you can see, they just fold down on both sides and then you just fold the main part down and and now it's going to go back under a bed probably for another eight, nine months or however long it was under there the last time because we just we just don't use them anymore. So not unless we absolutely have to, like I said before. So I hope some of these tips helped you guys out, um, you new puppy parents out there. I know I'm seeing a lot of them lately and I'm like super excited to see all the puppy pictures. So thank you guys for sending me puppy pics. You can always send me more and you can always send me them when they're adults. I am obsessed with this breed. So I am totally fine with puppy pictures being sent. I'm all for it. I always probably will be for crate training. So it's just, it's done wonders for my pack and I don't have to worry about a lot of things because of the training we did with the crate. So, but it's totally up to you whether you use one or not. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to click all the buttons and I will see you next time.